Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Crack That Bunker. I'm your host and coach Shifty, and I'll be showing you how to make life easier when you spot a couple of annoying omnics by the names of Arissa and Bastion set up on the other team. Now, there is a new PTR patch that is suggesting to buff both Arissa by letting her reload while setting a new shield, and Baptiste increasing his ult duration by 25% and heal ammo by 20%, so it's likely that bunker comp will become even more common than it is now. So now is the time to learn with me just how to crack it. First, and my personal favorite, the yoink and oink. Now you're going to need a roadhog, most likely for this combination, and the best way to handle this is to also have a may. If you don't already know where I'm going with this, well, you can use May's wall behind enemy shields and on Bastion. So you can lift the Bastion up over the shield and Roadhog can be in position to hook him and bring the Bastion down. Baptiste Immortality Field ain't going to be very useful when Bastion is in the middle of our team on the point. You can also do a similar thing with Orissa by sucking people up and hooking them above the shield but making sure that you know when that suck is going to go out there so you can pull them in. It doesn't work on Bastion, but it works on everybody else. You can also, if you don't have a Roadhog, possibly use it with a Widowmaker by having the Orisa suck, pulling her up, and making a pretty easy headshot. Another option is Boops. Lucio, Ball, Farah, they all can get boops behind the shield to knock portions of the bunker composition away, preferably off a of high ground onto low ground where they can't reposition with their team easily. This segmentation of their team can create opportunities to kill them off piecemeal and weaken that bunker composition so that we can now engage a little bit easier. You also have the option of lure and devour. With this strategy, what you do is you have someone that can test point and a Sombra. So when you send someone to test point, usually a ball, could be a diva, they're going to send someone over there to deal with it. Someone that can handle it one-on-one. -on -one. But what they don't know is there an invisible Sombra there as well. It's not a one-on-one. -on -one. It's a two-verse-one. They go to contest the point. Sombra hacks that target. Now, easy piecemeal here. Destroy that target. And now, same just like the boop, you have a much easier composition to deal with. If all else fails, and you can't get any teamwork, even two people working together here, then the best strategy is going Sombra and just building up EMP. Every fight that you try to get a hack on them, make sure that you also build up your EMP. Building up your ult charge should be your priority number one for every fight, whether you win or lose. Lost a fight, clear loss, I don't care. Get me 20% ult charge, 30% ult charge. I want to have EMP as soon as possible. Not three minutes into it, maybe a minute and a half at maximum two minutes into it. EMP can be a fantastic way to break bunker composition. Almost every hero is vulnerable to it. Just make sure that when you do EMP, make sure to hit at least that Bastion, Baptiste, and any support ults that you think might have a defensive ult available, including Mei, which can also make things tricky if they happen to be running a Mei. All right, okay, so you know that your team isn't going to be able to pull off any of the strategies we just talked about earlier. Really? Not even the spam thing? Okay, okay, fine. We've all been there before where your teammates lack discipline, teamwork, and possibly a fully functioning brain. So here are some tips that require the minimum amount of teamwork to execute. Although you will still need your team to at least follow up on these opportunities, so be sure to communicate when you do it and make sure that they are ready. Option number one, spam comp. Using a composition comprised entirely to maximize your range spam potential to destroy the enemy Orisa shield and take advantage of their inferior long range kill potential is a great way to burn down their bunker, especially if you can't get your team to play more than one tank. What you need for this composition is at least a tank for either a ball or Orisa on DPS, a combination of Farah, Hanzo, Soldier, Sombra, or even Bastion. And on heals, you want a Zenyatta and either a Mercy or an Ana. Now, this strategy is great for Bastion-based compositions because they lack that long-range potential, and the further away the bunker comp is going to be from your intended areas of spam, and the more angles that you can get, the better this strategy will work. 
As you can see here, multiple angles can be had from all portions of our team. We're running Zenyatta and Mercy on heals, Farah, Soldier, and Hanzo on DPS, and the balls are single tank. Every single hero in this composition, save for the Mercy, are going to be obliterating the shield on the bunker composition on the top right corner where most bunker comps hold on first point defense Numbani. Your goal is to take multiple angles to spam and hit the shield at the same time just as Orisa refreshes it. Targeting a fresh shield versus an old shield will cut your damage that you need to break through their defenses by half. So it's important not to be surprised by them Orisa putting a new shield up if you're shooting a shield that's already been there for a while. However, if it's a fresh shield, it's really going to make it a lot easier to get that bunker composition to start worrying. Once you do break the shield, keep up the spam, but don't charge the point just yet. Only your tank should pressure the point while everyone else keeps their strategic positions and gets ready to blow up whoever comes down to contest it. Now, once they do get another shield up, rinse and repeat on the damage for that shield to put more pressure on them until they've got nothing left. Play it safe, play it smart. This is a war of attrition that the bunker comp simply loses to because they have no answer to it unless you make multiple big mistakes. Watch out for Orisa's halt ability. It's better to make sure you avoid it entirely instead of eking out a few more seconds of spam. And be careful about your health because it's difficult for the healers to heal you in this composition because you're so spread out. If you're the one being focused by the Bastion or the enemy team, Make sure you're near some covers and you can react quickly. Don't be afraid to ask for a healing orb or to get a nearby health pack. Another option that you have is that you can dive them. The objective of this composition is to get past that annoying Orisa shield itself quickly and to focus on one target at a time. You should play heroes that can contribute to the fight with this in mind. Diva and Balder tanks a choice here, not Winston because he's likely to get destroyed by their large close range damage that a Bastion and other of these heroes can provide. While Ball can engage quickly and get up to 1300 total health while a pile drives in to cause both distraction and disruption. And D.Va can come up with the team using her matrix when the entire team dives in and Bastion decides to focus his attention on someone that isn't Ball. Afterwards she can pound away on the focus target and drop off before her mech gets destroyed. Genji on the other hand can dash in and use his deflect after D.Va runs out of Matrix to take Bastion out of the fight even longer while focusing him down and being evasive. If you run a Tracer with this composition, make sure to let her get into position first where she's only a blink away to be able to engage on the target. Same thing with Sombra. Make sure she gets in the position behind the enemy and has a hack opportunity before you go in. Prime hack targets here are Bastion and Baptiste. Baptiste's hack will get rid of that annoying immortality field and his regen burst AoE heal, while hacking Bastion obviously takes away the majority of his damage and defensive potential. Now, if they are running a Baptiste, then please remember to back off a bit and kill that immortality field when it pops out before going back in to finish the job. The initial dive can be a feint to cause them to throw that 20 second cooldown early while also clearing the area of any annoying turrets that might be active. You simply have to survive, heal up, get your cooldowns back, which come up much quicker than a mortality field, and then re-engage to finish them off. If they have a mercy, remember that she will try to res the first person you kill. Do not let her and make sure you punish her for trying. Keys to success are to make sure everyone is ready for the dive before you commit to it. Make sure everyone reaches the target near the same time and make sure everyone is attacking the same target, no split DPS. Finally, remember that surviving is usually better than an extra second or two of doing damage at low health if you have your healers alive. Now it's time for everybody's favorite strategy, brute Force, aka goats. If you can easily locate a way to close the gap between the bunker composition and yourself safely, then this goat style strategy can work wonders. If there are long sight lines where you have to travel in Bastion's line of sight to get to them, or he's on a high ground that you can't easily reach, then this strategy will not be the best plan. 
Keep that in mind. Now, for this plan, you go a tanky close range composition similar to goats that can get on top of the bunker safely and destroy them at close range. You're going to absolutely need a Reinhardt, Lucio, and Diva for this to work. You also would preferably like to have a Zarya, though a Reaper or Sombra can also work, and two of these supports in Brigitte, Moira, Baptiste, or Zenyatta. Now the key is to find an opportunity to close the gap on them safely while using Lucio's speed boost, Diva's defense matrix, and Reinhardt's shield. Bastion is great against tanks at medium range, however it takes him a long time to chew through all that health at close range. Using a combination of Lucio's speed boost and Reinhardt's shield hopping, you should be able to cross short gaps safely while using minimal D.Va defense matrix that you can save for later on the actual engagement. Most bunker comps are really slow at transitioning and they're super vulnerable when you catch them repositioning. Use this to your advantage and hit them hard and fast. In this example, you can reach the payload all the way from the choke at bridge in a single speed boost if you don't stop. If they're not extremely efficient in their transition, this can be an easy way to catch them by surprise. If they have a Baptiste, remember to call out the immortality field and focus it down immediately before going back to the Bastion. Don't waste your time with the Orisa as your first target. If you're running a Baptiste of your own, try to position it in spots that are out of line of sight from the Bastion but covers where we're taking the fight to keep the team alive even longer. Think of spots around corners or even behind the payload, but remember that your team needs to be in line of sight of the immortality field to gain its benefits. No matter what strategy you use to take on bunkers, don't get frustrated if it doesn't go as smoothly as it should. It takes much more teamwork to crack a bunker comp than it does to play it which is why it's so popular right now. However, it's a comp that has its weaknesses that we discussed, and if you can find the right plan for your team, you can score some easy SR. Know what else can help you get easy SR? GameLeap.com has even more pro guides and courses to help you with a ton of other situations and individual hero advice. Costing about the same as a Twitch sub, we're confident you'll love our help and the value it provides. In fact, if you don't like it, we'll give you a full refund within 30 days. So get your membership today by clicking right here. See you on the inside.